Yeah, let's talk now with Sandy. Sandy, you're with Allworth's Money Matters. Hi, how are you, gentlemen? We're fantastic. How are you doing, Sandy? Good, good. I always enjoy your program. Thank you. We do, too. Well, good. <laughs> we enjoy doing uh, it. Oh, okay. Don't <laughs> listen to it. I listen to it. I listen to my own. Continuous sh- loop. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you come into my house, there it that's is. That's awesome. Uh, what can we do for you? So I have an IRA, and I've always contributed it to it um, because I like to take the deduction. Okay. But you often talk about um, the back door, and I don't know what that is. The okay. Back, you know, back a back door Roth conversion. Okay. And are you working now? Yes, I am, and I'm seventy three. And what's your oh, good for you? What's your approximate income? Okay. Um, somewhere between two and two hundred fifty thousand a year. Okay. And how much money do you have in IRAs? Um, I have close to two million. Okay. And uh, and all of those are deductible. Yes, it's a um, there. It's a SEP IRA. It's a SEP yeah. IRA. Are you self-employed? I am. Yeah. And why are you using the SEP IRA and not another vehicle? Because I guess that's what I was. Someone told me I should do a do long you, time ago. Do so you I've ha- done that for thirty years. Do you have any employees? Um, I have one. Well. I'm a real estate broker, so I have an employee for my office, but then I keep my own personal business separate as okay. an agent. Okay. So you, I'm a 1099 employee. Okay. Because you can set up what's called, simply, you can set up what's called a solo K and funnel about 60 or 70, what's the limit this year? 60 uh, some odd grand, something like that? Yes. So you- oh, Actually, more, maybe more than that. Uh, so, so when I started- and you can funnel it into a Roth. That's a Roth solo in a Roth, K. Yes. And so- when when I started in this business thirty some odd years ago, it was the SEP. Everyone was like, "It's a SEP, it's a SEP," but it has evolved. Life has evolved past that, um, and now you actually have many things that are much more advantageous, and you can do it on a Roth, which achieves the same objective, by the way. But I'll explain what a backdoor Roth is, and then why it won't work for you. How's that? Um, okay, that's good. <laughs> so I won't worry about it anymore. Okay. <laughs> so uh, a, a, a backdoor Roth, actually, what happens is it I make a non-deductible IRA contribution. Yeah. So my income is over a certain level and I can't deduct right. my IRA anymore. So I make a non-deductible IRA contribution. And are you contributing to traditional IRAs in addition to the SEP? No. Okay, yeah, because you wouldn't get a deduction. So I make a non-deductible IRA contribution. And then the very next day I convert it into a Roth. And because there was no growth in it, I essentially didn't pay any taxes on that. And then there's rules around it. I have to keep it there for five years and there's all kinds of rules around that. But what happens is if I do that, right. And you said you have an IRA or a SEP IRA, right. Is I have right. to do it on a pro rata basis. And I don't know if it applies to a SEP IRA as well. Do you, Scott? I was reading something as you were talking, so I didn't hear oh. what you were stating. <laughs> no, uh, the, so if I, so if I um, have $2 million in an IRA and I wanted to convert you know, $10,000 of that, make a non-deductible IRA contribution of five grand and wanted to convert it, I have to do it on a pro rata yeah, basis. Pro rata. Which, because you've got so much money in IRAs, it makes no sense for you. It, doesn't, it would be just it, like doing a Roth conversion. That's right. So you do have... I mean, I I theoretically, she could set up a solo K, transfer her SEP IRA into that. That's right. Then she would have no IRAs and then do it. But it... But it's not going to benefit you anything. Th- correct. <laughs> and you're probably just better off setting up a solo K and then making Roth contributions to that. Maybe. Maybe. But you've got a lot of money in your re- retirement account. And your income's relatively high. Mm-hmm. And my guess is you're not going to, you don't plan on retiring anytime soon. Is that fair? No, I really, I'm like you. Yeah, I get it. I love, I love what I do. So, <laughs> um, so I, the, the back door won't work for you. The, the other question is, do I – well, first of all, you want to do a UNIK, the SEP, if you want to shelter more income. Well, and, and a Roth option. So I imagine there's some years that are better than others, and there's some years you might, instead of taking a tax deduction and having even additional dollars – I mean, it's the required minimum distributions that are going to be a real Which, annoyance to you soon. <laughs> right? Soon enough. Yeah. This year, I have to, this year is the 
come to Jesus moment. Yeah, soon enough. Yeah, uh, so you've got you're going to have your work income and that at the same time. At the same mm-hmm. time, but you can still make contributions to um, the solo K. You, you would you would benefit greatly by sitting down with a qualified advisor and them actually going through the negatives and positives of what contributions and where uh, and for and paying for that. And I don't know if you're using yeah, and, our, and and it's not just about how do we get how do we get Sandy's net worth to the maximum. It's like what are these dollars going to be used for? And maybe maybe you don't need to put any more money aside at all. Maybe you should just spend it. I don't know. Do you use an advisor now? I do use an advisor and the reason I've always continued to um Contribute to my IRA is because I like the tax deduction. Understand, but I, I got to. Right? But but I, I'll say. But the other thing that I have found is using my IRA is a wonderful vehicle for giving. Yeah, but there's limits on that as well. I oh, mean, right. It, yeah, but but the limit is higher than what my RMD is this year. That's correct. Yeah, oh. and, and so that, well, that's why I said that understanding what is the purpose. So if you've got a high charitable intent and you're like. I'm going to gift my RMD up to up to, up to hundred thousand. Up to a hundred. Uh, no, up to a hundred. Uh, yeah, I'm going to gift my. I think it might have been. Uh, is it a hundred or hundred and five? I can't remember whether it's ah, indexed to inflation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. around a hundred. Yeah. Um. Then I mean, then it's not nearly the problem. And not only that, if then your plan you, if your plan is when you pass away to have that go to a charity, which by the way, it might be some of the best dollars if you're going to give any money to a charity, money from your retirement plan, because. So then I would make the argument that you should actually have a solo K and put more money into it. Is this a conversation that you've had with your advisor? Uh, not about the solo K, no. Well, the advisor is the one that should be bringing it up. Okay. And your investment allocation, how much is in stock, that's all should all be secondary to – what like here's Sandy seventy three. I bet when you were twenty three, you didn't think you'd still be have this energy and work when you're seventy three. But here you are, right? Seventy three, loving what you're doing, no intention of retiring. Like, how do we structure Sandy's financial life so that it accomplishes everything Sandy wants in the most tax favored manner? That's the conversation, your advisor. Because the tax man's going to take a third of this or more, like half of your income. When you look at your self employment, all that stuff. So, like. Yeah. The solo K would probably be the the best vehicle, but look, you know, you're a real estate agent and is it residential or commercial? I mean, I do residential. Okay. I have never sold a house on my own. I always, always use a real estate agent. And the reason is they know things I don't. In fact, they know things that I'll never know. And I'm actually, I, I think I have a fairly good understanding of residential commercial real estate, but I don't don't understand the intricacies or the questions that I should ask. And so if your advisor isn't bringing these things up to you, like what are the objectives with this money? I just have another conversation with another advisor to get. Sometimes advisors get lazy. Different set of eyes. (laughs) Sometimes advisors get lazy. As do some real estate agents. That's right. (laughs) I'm guessing. (laughs) I'm guessing not Sandy though. I'm guessing not Sandy. <laughs> so anyway, well, that's 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 what that's where you need to go. Reach out to a professional and lay it out. The backdoor Roth doesn't work for you, but there are many many uh, tools in the chest that can be used. Yeah, uh, and to- it's really because I, I imagine your thoughts on things are different today than they were ten years ago too, because you've got more assets than you had ten years ago, and now you're interested in doing charity uh, work and all that other stuff. So, so appreciate appreciate the call.